Which page of history involves the dairy industry, the welfare system, and multiple American presidents? Yes, this one goes all the way to the top. I'm talking about government cheese. Oh my gosh, welcome to the show. <laughs> And my very special guests this week, I've got Jessica Perkins and David Hornicky. Good evening. And who are you? Oh, I'm Matt Stewart. <laughs> Do I, is that important? Yeah. Matt, Do the people you. have a right to know? Oh, well, they have a right to know as much as you are willing to let them know. Okay, well, I'm going to go with Mr. Stewart then. Okay, great. I don't want to let them know that my first name is Matt. Yeah, cool. Let's not tell them that your first name is Matt. Okay, can you have, edit that bit out? <laughs> Just bleep the Matts there, including that one then. Thanks, Evan. Actually, bleep out Evan as well, because I don't want them to... You didn't give me permission to let them know who you are either. Are we allowed to say your name, Matt, or is that beeped? No, that's fine. Okay. So we can say Matt, but you can't say... Okay. Because if I say it, then they'll know it's me, but if you say it, it could be anyone. Sure. Who, how are you I talking know to that think? guy behind you? Oh, I'm Bleep that one out as well, because he also <laughs> hasn't given permission to say his name. Anyway, this week... I'm going to tell you all about the story of government cheese. <laughs> Am I saying that right? No, but I'm <laughs> loving it. Government cheese. Have you ever heard of government cheese? It's a very confusing topic. Like, the, the concept mm. is confusing to me. Okay. So I can't wait for you to unconfuse me. Uh, to me, it's very appealing because there's two things I like in this world. It's cheese yep. and government. Oh, me too. When I saw it suggested, I'm like... What did you just do? Scissored. All right. Government and cheese finally coming together. Yeah, scissoring. What are you... No, I was just asking. I wanted, just wanted a clarification. clarification. That's all. That wasn't almost, having a go. Okay, I hope not, because what you did was fine, Dave. Thank you. Matt. Let us begin. <laughs> <laughs> the US government-owned Commodity Credit Corporation was given authority to purchase dairy products from farmers in 1949 to help prop up the dairy market and keep farmers afloat. Oh, okay. So they're just buying up dairy. Well, they're allowed to, yeah. Does that answer just the question yeah. already? Well, that sort of solves it, doesn't it? <laughs> right, so it's government cheeses, they bought a bunch of dairy products. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Well, it sort of made the next few paragraphs a little bit superfluous now that you understand it already, but anyway, let okay, me... Yeah, well, just in case. Just in case. Well, I mean, some of them probably aren't as quick as you. You're like this. Not many people are. <laughs> what are they like? They're like... Click. They say click before the click. Wow. They're stupid. Resulting from a shortage of dairy products, in 1973, the price of foods like cheese shot up by around 30%. <laughs> the government got involved, but this backfired, as the intervention was partially responsible for the price of dairy going the other way, dropping <laughs> super low. Oh. In 1977, under freshly elected President Jimmy Carter, the government injected $2 billion into the industry in a four-year period. That's a lot of moolah. That's a lot of money mm. in a, lot a of, short period of time. A lot of cheese, you'd like, think. Too much. Cheese. Does anyone, like, people call it bread and stuff. Does anyone call it cheese? That's a lot of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they should. If not, they should, yeah. Mm. Put a brie on top. It starts now. Ah. Oh. You got any brie? <laughs> yeah, you got... I'm talking about camembert, man. <laughs> you owe me five cheese of camembert. <laughs> so through the 70s, dairy farmers had yo-yoed between being broke and then flush with cash. <laughs> but after this latest invention, they were flush once again. Oh. They could now sell as much milk as they were able to produce and the government would buy whatever the market didn't. What did the government do with all this milk they were buying? Well... They turned it into products with a longer shelf life. Things like butter, milk powder, and yes, cheese. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sorry. You got quite aggressive yeah, there. Yeah, sorry like, that we, we were well, yes. so, I'm so sorry if we were giving off vibes yeah. that we did get not to believe the cheese. you. Yeah, <laughs> get to the cheese, buddy. You promised us cheese. You promised us. <laughs> you promised us cheese. You promised us cheese. Now bring us the cheese. I don't want to hear about milk powder, government milk powder. Yuck, whatever. Yeah. Butter, get out of here. Cheese, I'm listening. Not classic cheese, admittedly. Uh, that what do you wouldn't mean? have made much sense. What do you mean by classic not, cheese? Not your classic cheese. String cheese? <laughs> They're making fucking bigger stringers? Well, you're, you're closer to the point because um, normal cheese also doesn't have a super long shelf life. No. Hang on, so there's classic cheese, there's normal cheese. Well, normal cheese and classic cheese are the same. Right. You know, you can, yeah. 
coming together. Uh, pro processed cheese is what they were making. <gasps> also known as plastic cheese or cheese product. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> mm, slice mm. me up some of that product. If I have five kilos of cheese product, please. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. Well, you want to get involved in government cheese. Uh, processed cheese is made with regular cheese with the addition of other products like whey, emulizers, preservatives, and that delicious food coloring. <laughs> Can we make it yellow? <laughs> make it more yellow. Mm. Make it such an unnatural yellow that there's no question that it's not real cheese. Yeah, oh yeah. And often over there it's orange. Yeah, yeah. that's the American cheese is, is orange, or jack cheese. I don't think you can call it that. Oh. That doesn't sound good. The only jack. Yeah, oh. That is confusing. <laughs> Legally processed cheese is not allowed to be sold as cheese in America and has to be labelled as cheese food. <laughs> but it has many benefits over regular cheese. The most relevant in this case is its longer shelf life. Mm. Admittedly, it still didn't last forever, <laughs> but it did last longer than normal cheese because of the preservatives and the emulizers, whatever they are. Do you know what the other benefits are? What are I can't think of what the, the other, other benefits. Well, I mean, it's uh, more consistent. They know exactly what it's going to do because... It's been created by science. Yeah. Rather Not than leaving art, it to nature. The art artists in the bloody dairy industry. These hippy dippy types. <laughs> oh yes, we let the blue veins go wild. Not in cheese products. No, no, no. As the farmers produced more and more milk, the government started to have so much dairy product, they didn't know what to do with it. Eventually, they had as much as five hundred million pounds of processed <laughs> cheese. <laughs> Where is it? It was stored across 35 different states in all sorts of storage facilities. How much again, sorry? 500 million pounds. <laughs> That's too much. Are they in giant sheds like, like, are they guarded by like the army or something? Yeah. <laughs> so oh, no, yeah. they actually made security guards out of cheese. Yeah. <laughs> they had so much. They just put sunglasses on a glob of cheese. Cheese protecting cheese. It's like the terracotta <laughs> army. This was uh, terra cheddar army. <laughs> no, no two soldiers are alike. Yeah. No, that was the thing with processed cheese. They were all exactly the same. <laughs> Identical. Consistency was key. Mm. You know what you're getting. Yeah. You're getting are they all a... called Jack? <laughs> yes. Yeah, they're all Jack, yeah. <laughs> uh, eventually they, yeah, they had as much as 500 million pounds. <laughs> oh, my That's God. so stupid. It's so much. And in 1981, when a member of the United States Department of Agriculture was asked what should be done with all the cheese, he told the Washington Post, quote, probably the cheapest and most practical thing to do would be to dump it in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> That's the cheapest. Oh, imagine and... wet cheese. <laughs> oh, uh, you're probably not going to eat it after that, eh? No. Mm. The fish like cheese? Salty. Yeah, oh yeah, fish love cheese. Well, who doesn't love cheese? It's the most practical. That's I a lie. Cheese. I didn't like cheese for a long time. I think, yeah. I was late to cheese. Oh. I'm making up for it. I was early to cheese. I've never left. <laughs> By this stage, they had more than two pounds of cheese for every person in America. It got to the point that the government was storing so much cheese that they basically started paying farmers to not produce it. <laughs> they did this by buying their cows. Ah, that'll do it. Yeah. We'll just, we'll take those and put them in a, in a storage <laughs> facility. It's guarded by men made of cheese. Yeah. No, men made of cows. <laughs> <laughs> Very important this <laughs> distinction. America was drowning in cheese, though this wasn't really known publicly until Secretary of Agriculture John R. Block brought... No. Yeah. Block of cheese. Block of cheese. <laughs> he brought one of the five-pound bricks of deteriorating cheese to a White House event, showing it to the assembled press and stating, we've got 60 million of these that the government owns. It's mouldy. It's deteriorating. We can't find a market for it. We can't sell it. And we're looking to try to give some of it away. And he he brought, was freaking out. He brought it to the White House. <laughs> trying, they're having a function. Yeah, like, they're please. sending hors d'oeuvres and he, people are like, oh, cheese. He's like, don't eat it. It's disgusting. But take it home. <laughs> so they're like a huge brick. Build like your like, homes with it. I don't care. Sort of like gold bullions. Yeah, of cheese. Yeah, they're just piled on. <laughs> It's gross. Ronald Reagan became president in 1981, and the early 80s were dogged by recessions. Despite this, Reagan pledged to reduce the federal food stamp program. In light of all this, news of huge government food stores sitting unused didn't go down well with certain segments of the American people. And pressure grew on Reagan to release the cheese. <laughs> Is that a campaign? <laughs> release <laughs> <started>. the cheese! <laughs> release the cheese to the people who needed it. It, sort of, it does seem like that. It makes sense. You've got all this cheese. We're going through a recession. People are hungry. 
Give them cheese. No, but honestly, I still think the cheapest and easiest thing to do would be to dump it dump in the ocean. ocean. Yeah, that makes the most sense, I think. By December 1981, Reagan bowed to these pressures, saying, At a time when American families are under increasing financial pressure, their government cannot sit by and watch millions of pounds of food turn to waste, before announcing he'd release 30 million pounds of the cheese to those who needed it. This signaled the start of the Temporary Emergency Food Assistance Program, which started distributing five pound blocks of cheese to the elderly and low income earners. The era of government cheese was here. So, so the elderly and low income, and they're just giving them cheese. It's part of it, yeah. They still get food stamps and on top of what they were already getting, they would also get cheese. a huge block of cheese monthly. And you can do whatever you want with it. Whatever you whatever want. Whatever you want. That's well, your choice. As it ta- I mean, it sounds like it. you probably can do whatever you want with it because it, it wasn't the most versatile of cheeses. <laughs> Apparently very good on a toasted sandwich. That's what I was thinking. Very Love good with macaroni. Sandwich. Ooh. They need to hand out like a cheese cookbook. Mm. Yes. Yeah, somebody, okay. Somebody can make a cheese cookbook. Yes. Okay. Out Does of, that out happen? Out of the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Paper's out. Yeah. Cheese, cheese is in. in. <laughs> Is everyone having like crazy cheese dreams? Like half of oh, America yeah. just are losing their shit at night? <laughs> I imagine so, yes. <laughs> Undocumented, but yeah, that, that was why a lot of crazy 80s things happen. Yeah. Name an example and that would be that would be a good opportunity Your for birth. It. <laughs> yes, that was because of American government cheese. Parachute pants. Parachute pants, <laughs> MC Hammer. But, well, I thought I was being chased by wolves, so I thought <laughs> I'd put on parachute pants. <laughs> cheese dreams are a crazy thing. They're real, they're a real they're thing. They're real. Due to the nature of the cheese handouts, many remember it as a stinky symbol of the hard times they were going through and a pungent promotion of their lower socioeconomic status. Oh, that sucks. It's a well-written yeah. sentence, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, beautiful sentence. Mm. Poetry. Mm. But, uh, but the image is sad. Yeah, it is. So it, it's, uh, some people look back at it with sort of mixed memories, like writer Bobby Dempsey, uh, who calls the cheese a day-glow orange matter that provided equal parts sustenance and humiliation. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's no good. Because mm. if you were getting it, it meant that you were not earning enough to be able to feed. Yeah, okay. So in her oh. essay titled The Tyranny and the Comfort of Government Cheese, Dempsey went on to write, In the school cafeteria or when a friend came over and peered in the fridge, the cheese was a source of infinite shame, a clear indicator of our financial situation. But she also remembers that when no one else was watching, my siblings and I liked the cheese, or at least <laughs> learned to tolerate it. Oh. My younger brother was probably the biggest fan, believing then, and still now, that it made for the best grilled cheese sandwiches. <laughs> Love a grilled cheese. Others look back on the cheese nostalgically, like food writer Tracy Lynn Lloyd, who wrote, If someone made me a, a grilled cheese with government cheese today, I probably couldn't eat it. It would be t- far too salty for my current taste. <laughs> I guess that's because of the ocean. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that'll do it. I have to fetch it out. But I'd still take Give one bite rinse. just for the memories. Yeah, right. So now she's progressed and her palate yeah. has matured. Mm. Now it's Like a fine cheese only product. Only the finest cheese products for her. Mm. <laughs> one angle we haven't discussed yet is that not everyone can eat cheese. Miles oh. Karp wrote in an article for Vice that, according to the University of Georgia, 75% of African Americans... 51% of Latinos and 80% of Asian Americans are lactose intolerant versus uh, 21% of Caucasians. Because minorities historically have been heavily represented in welfare programs, the government wasn't really doing American butts a favour. <laughs> no, so, like, I'm sorry, just again, an amazing sentence. Yeah, like it sounded out so like, oh, wow, really yeah. political, really scientific butts. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank Miles Carp as a way, doesn't he? You're not back. doing my butt any favours. Brought it back to our level at the end. Super Why don't you think a little bit more about my butt when you're making your government decisions? But isn't that, that's pretty amazing. Like Caucasians with at one in five lactose intolerant up to um, eight, look, four in five Asian Americans lactose intolerant. So it means the vast majority of people getting the cheese. Can't at, eat it. And if they do, it's, it's ruining them. Distressing their stomachs insides. and yeah. their butts. Yeah, and then that doesn't include vegans and yeah. people who just don't like cheese. Yep. Me as a child. How did it taste, though? There's probably a question on your lips. Salty, I've heard. Yeah, but it also is often described as a mild cheddar. That's sort of... Like, okay. Um, some remember it being perfect for things like macaroni and cheese. And there are companies who still use it today 
Um, there's a, a burger chain called Wahlbergs who still use government cheese in all their burgers. That's sort of, I guess it's a nostalgia thing. For many American kids growing up in the 80s, government cheese was one of the main staples in their diet. But all good things must come to an end. And when the dairy market stabilised in the 90s, the government no longer had to hoard so much cheese. And so that's a bit sad. That's a bit honest. sad. What about all that cheese, you know? No, just what got, could have been? Got Aiden, I guess. Oh. Aiden. Got Aiden. No, got Aiden. <laughs> that's, not the, that's not the word, is it? No, that's right. <laughs> if you think that was the end of it, though, you'd be wrong. Oh. Because in 2018, the Secretary of the Agricultural Department, Sonny Perdue, announced that the Commodity Credit Corporation will once again be used to help subsidise the dairy industry by paying farmers up to $11 billion for their losses. And in 2000... That's for one farmer? One farmer. Wow! wow. Imagine being that one lucky farmer. Get $11 billion. Yeah. What would you do down, with it? Come Sean Casey! Yay! <laughs> Who's Sean Casey, or did you really just make that up? Oh, that's a farmer. You that did, feels like you've rigged the system. Is he a friend of yours? Yeah, you did that with so much confidence. Yeah, <laughs> I, should, I shouldn't have called him Uncle Sean Casey. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Single uncle, and <laughs> I'm his favourite nephew, yeah. Sean Casey. How do I know that? I don't know that. I don't know that. It's an accident. So in the, in the 90s, the, the stockpile went right back down again. Right. But... As of uh, 2018, the national cheese stockpile hit a, a new all-time high. What? With nearly 1.4 billion pounds of surplus cheese sitting in warehouses across America. Why are they... Why? Stop making it! I think, yeah, they, 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 they get caught in a cycle of keeping dairy farmers afloat and then it seems like there's long periods where they aren't self-sustainable or whatever. <laughs> So how much how much is there as of twenty eighteen? One point four billion pounds. Fuck me, that's so much cheese. Wow. It's a lot of cheese. Yeah, it seems like a weird system. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's got, it feels like there's got to be a better way. But then, then when they can find something good to do with it, what? Like, right, well, if the system works, which it maybe does. Yeah, I guess yeah. I should say I haven't done uh, any ec- economics study uh, since year eleven. Mm. When I did fine. So okay. good to hear it. Good to hear. I've got a real expert with us here. Oh so, yeah. How'd we you go? Fine. How'd you go in food tech with cheese? Oh, I failed. <laughs> <laughs> failed miserably. Uh, so government cheese is now back. In 2018, Bobby Dempsey, who we heard from before, wrote: "Recently, our family came full circle as my mother began once again receiving the blocks of government cheese as part of food boxes distributed to low-income senior citizens. Ah. My mother's dietary restrictions prevent her from eating the cheese." So she passed it along to me and my sister. Seeing the same brick-shaped boxes I know so well, I immediately felt the old familiar contradictory mix of emotions. Shame plus something like reverence for this staple of my childhood that provided my family with critical sustenance. Wow, that sentence didn't end with him talking about a butt. Yeah. Yeah, well, there's a a different writer. This is a woman now with a different name. (laughs) So, that's so that might be why. Miles Carp finishes all his uh, paragraphs and parts. <laughs> oh, so sorry, I often confuse my butt writers. Yeah. With the cheese writers. That pretty much brings me to the end of the story. But there is a quick fun fact. Government cheese has been referenced in a bunch of different songs over the years, including ones by Jay-Z and Kendrick Lamar. I'd never heard of it until very recently, but in America, it's, um, it's, a, it's a big thing. And they call it government, government cheese. Government cheese. Huh. So fun. <laughs> That's so fun. Yeah, I don't know. I feel because I I can't without being there. I can't fully get my head around it. But as a kid who loved huge blocks of we were you know huge home brand blocks of cheese yeah. growing up, it sounds very similar to what I would have had in my fridge as a kid. Yeah. But yeah, that was I didn't know shame. So I wonder if you two have matured in your palate mm. for cheese. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think I have. Okay, quick fire round. Favorite cheese. Uh, blue cheese. Favorite cheese. I love I love a hard cheddar. Big cheddar. I had a a sharp. Yeah, a sharp, I love a sharp cheddar. Sharp cheddar. Mm, mm. I had one that was um had vinegar through it the other night, and it was delicious. What? Yum. Mm. Guess your favorite cheese. Uh, brie, double brie. Get he, out of here, triple brie. He's just, he just doubling. Brie, double brie, no. triple brie, eight times brie. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh, oh no, oh, cheese! You got, me. you got me. I don't like cheese at all. <laughs> 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 well, that's it for Government Cheese. This is a spin-off of our podcast, Do Go On, with over 200 episodes to listen to. If you like this topic, 
Check out some of our other food related episodes like the history of McDonald's, the great maple syrup heist, and the Glasgow ice cream wars. Subscribe for free on your favorite podcast app and be sure to subscribe to this channel to check out our other videos. Why didn't you mention our episode on government cream? Oh, that was um, an oversight. <laughs> <laughs> Too risky for podcasting. We've also done an episode on Vegemite. Yep. And uh, Coca-Cola. Yes. Which is like a liquid food in some ways. I think uh, in some parts of the world, they'll call it a, 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 a drunk, I think is how you say it. A drunk. Sorry, a drunk. Are, you, are you drunk now? A drunk. I'll call you a drunk. <laughs>